bit further, let's bring in Ryan Kurana, a tech policy writer and former Republican state senator, John Loudon. Ryan, we'll start with you. Let's start with a big question. Do you believe that social media companies are solely platforms or are they actually responsible for the content posted on their platforms? Um, the law has made it clear that they are solely platforms and the case is clear to this day that they're solely platforms. They are not responsible for the content on their sites and if they were made responsible for the content on their sites, uh, social media would just stop existing. There's too much content there to hold these companies responsible for it. John, your thoughts? Well, the issue here is uh, the content that uh, that they're blocking. So they've decided to weigh into the game, and uh, and that's what's so offensive. But there's also the other topic here is how they are uh, are uh, colluding uh, to elect candidates. So I suppose well, the question would be: is is have social media companies, gentlemen, have they become, for lack of a better term, political stooges in a way for uh, individuals and foreign entities looking to influence elections? That there's no evidence of this, the, the idea that they're, they're colluding to uh, elect certain candidates. Um, the alleged anti-conservative bias that sites like Twitter and Facebook have, yes, there's a few cases, but it would just go against the company's bottom lines to try to continue with this. And it would not seem to me profitable in the long run to alienate a large American demographic. John, we heard Sheryl well, Sandberg saying today, we were too slow to spot this and too slow to act. This is on us. Well, they're, they're, the whole thing is a smokescreen uh, for the uh, colluding that they did to elect uh, Barack Obama in 2008. Google and Facebook, um, and probably Twitter too, but at least Google and Facebook, were at the table planning uh, planning the uh, Obama campaign. They, they had this amazing, these amazing powerful tools and they used them to elect Barack Obama. This is well known. I just, I just want to interject. Uh, so, so in two, please don't interrupt me. Uh, and then so in 2016, Cambridge, Cambridge Analytica and Steve Bannon to elect candidates for a long time. The, the, this, this claim of collusion is quite absurd. Like, it's not like the CEOs from all three of these companies met together. Do they help certain actually, people? They they did. They, they actually did. What? They actually That's did meet the, together. Uh, Obama's idea. inner circle kitchen cabinet included top executives from Google and Facebook. This is well known. From, from Google, let yes. Ryan respond. There was, there was evidence of Google helping the Obama administration. They do have this kind of uh, relationship with the campaign. And providing this kind of data, though, th there's nothing that violates election integrity from doing that, from collaborating. <laughs> you then went on the other side to say about the Cambridge Analytica yeah. thing and about micro-targeting. There is no evidence of votes flipping as a result of micro-targeting. It may be an effective campaign to get things shared, but it usually targets people who will respond to that type of target. Gentlemen, so there's no... No. Gentlemen, I, I'm sorry, just a moment ago, Tal was talking about the comment from Sheryl Sandberg, but uh, the Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey also made a comment. He says, we simply haven't done enough. But, I mean, how... How is the public, how, how are social media users supposed to look at these words as, as more than just platitudes at this point? I mean, what do the social media platforms need to do to restore confidence among the users? Well, one thing they can stop censoring and stop shadow banning. Uh, you know, this, uh, how many user agreements uh, in these social media companies that you, everybody signs so that you get it for free and you basically sign away your rights. How many of these user agreements say, yes, you might spend all day long tweeting and no one's going to see your tweets because we're going to secretly ban your tweets uh, from being seen by anybody uh, with our analytics. Uh, you know, some, some uh, tech geek in the Silicon Valley came up with that. That wasn't an accident. That wasn't a, a failure to be proactive. That is deliberate tipping of the scales and censoring YouTube, censoring Prager University and, and Diamond and Silk, people getting their accounts canceled. I mean, these are, this is tipping the scales for the public debate. And what scarier thing than the country that invented free speech uh, being, uh, being the country where uh, one side has free speech and the other side has speech far more regulated. And that's and what we have here, without well, a doubt. I I just want to respond to that. Do, why would you want to regulate the speech of these companies, though? They have free speech as well. They have First Amendment rights as well. I think the real problem isn't the one or two cases of them banning someone. The real problem is that the task of content moderation, the task of dealing with the amount of users these companies have, is unprecedented. So Jack Dorsey is right in saying they haven't done enough. 
but it's very difficult to do enough. And I don't think anyone at Congress or anyone outside of these companies actually knows what to do better than they do. Ryan, um, I want to ask you this. You know, they, I, I, they, Ryan, I want to ask you this. Yes. I, I understand why hacking into computers, taking, using, you know, users' data or changing votes, really, it, it's illegal. But what about fake ads? Why is that so important? Aren't we, the consumers, the ones to decide what's fake, what's new? Isn't everything on social media fake, in a sense? Well, so the, the, the problem with that is, so they didn't respond to this before the 2016 election because nobody knew that this would happen. But afterwards, there was a huge backlash to these companies as a result of fake uh, ads and, and foreign interference. And it is just in their market incentive to respond to what the consumers want. And that what the consumers want is to be protected from fake news. What the consumers want oh is gosh. to not have foreign meddling. <laughs> no. There is, there is no. a uh, Pull that one. Up. Pull that one. All right. All right guys. Ryan, I want to see a poll. We're, we're, we're going to have to leave it right there, gentlemen. Thank you so much <laughs> okay. for your time, uh, John and Ryan. <laughs> Thank you.